Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where I promised you space stations, but instead I'm going to give you a Minmus trip. The last engineer meeting brought up the fact that we do not have the full-size Clampatron docking ports, so we are going to need them before we can go anywhere. So we will be suckling upon the sweet, sciencey teeth that is Minmus. We've taken a few contracts to make it worth our while. We have left behind the design a new surface outpost on Mimus, just because with our technology level at the moment, I thought it best not to. Though the ones that we have got there, we've got a little test thing whilst we're landed, a hydraulic manifold. We need to place a satellite into synchronous orbit around Mimus, And we also have to do the explore Mimus contracts, the uh, take science from orbit, get into orbit, take science from the ground land. Invoking the spirit of Blue Peter, I should go over to the launch pad and scroll my way all the way down to the bottom of the list. Here's one I made earlier, the witty Minmus pun. Obviously we're gonna get kick Jebediah out and put Valentina in and uh, let's go. Suddenly a wild new microphone appears. Hi guys, sorry about last Wednesday's miss. Uh, obviously this is why I had broken my microphone. I'd lost one of my band, so we're now stuck with this one. Uh, you know, it's a snowball, so it should be quite good, but I understand that the sound quality will be different and my ears myself think that it's lower quality, but we're just gonna have to deal with what we've got here. But anyway, in the background, you will see me taking care of the deployed the hydraulic manifold whilst landing contract. In the background you'll see my first flight here, not to give any spoilers away but I thought it went alright. Our flight path seemed good if a little bit shallow and we picked up a bit of a wobble every now and then but you know that is going to happen with such a large bulky payload up top though. But we had good staging and even managed to get up into a good solid orbit. Unfortunately a little way afterwards when I was thinking hey let's let's get our way out to Minmus I decided to check my outer fuel tanks only to see that we'd burnt far far too much fuel coming up through the atmosphere so it was time for a revert and add a few extra fuel tanks to it. And then began one of the more troubling, maybe even harrowing experiences of this particular mission. Uh, obviously I'd put some extra fuel tanks on the top of the external tanks and it turned out that moving their weight that far forward, or moving the centre of mass that, way, that far forward, or adding extra weight towards the front, had uh, changed my drag profile quite considerably and I ended up just having lots and lots and, and even more spin outs and instability problems and just trouble, trouble, trouble. But after we gave it a bit of a professional back-end fiddle, we eventually ended up with a rocket that wouldn't fly like a jelly trying to get his mates home after a long weekend. This time the flight profile was almost spot on. We did have to take a little bit of SAS control at about 8km to make sure we hit the magic 45 degrees at 10km mark. It was then a set relatively simple matter to let these seven swivel engines burn through all the fuel in the external fuel tanks. Uh, we were pushing our way up to about 20km or so before we had to make our staging, before we let the one single swivel engine that was left take over the main job of getting us up to an apoapsis. I was aiming to go for around 70km or so, being mindful of the fact that the lower we are to the atmosphere, the higher we can get a both boost off of the O-Birth effect, which means we save fuel in the long run. And of course, saving Delta V is what space flight, well, efficient space flight is all about. So we're coming up to the top here. You can see that my apple apsis is about 73. I don't really want to push it up that high. And the best way to circularize your orbit without uh, climbing on apoapsis is of course to wait till you're as close as apoapsis before firing your engines and pushing up the periapsis and it's pretty much only by following that advice that you will end up with a perfectly circular orbit without it extending like hundreds of meters up into the air. Of course I say air but we're in a vacuum and I say meters but I meant kilometers. Ah, but anyway, here we are. We're going to sort out um, a little bit of a manoeuvre node here. What we're trying to do is get out to like Minmus altitude and then later on at our descending node there, make the inclination burn to bring us down to that. N not really the easiest point for us to do that there because the place where the Homan orbital transfer is its most effective unfortunately puts Minmus at its most distant um, sort of inclination change, which is a little bit... A little bit vexing, but, you know, we're going to just spend some time messing around with these and make sure we get the, the perfect orbit, really. So, flying out to Minma seems to be the best place to talk about this brand new microphone that I'm using. Uh, first off, sorry about the shifting quality. Obviously, I'm using this episode as kind of a, a gauge, a sort of a trial and error process, trying to figure out what's the best place to have my microphone, and what's the best, like, audio settings to add, uh, what... What's the best way to use it all around? Um, I'm still struggling with it. If you guys have any tips or tricks, like please do let me know. I'm picking up a lot of echo on the microphone at the moment, or at least I feel like I am. Uh, I'm doing my best that I can to try and damp that down. I've got fabric up everywhere to try and help with that. But yeah, it's not, it's 
not really an ideal scenario. Plus, I'm not used to a microphone that's just quite so sensitive as this. Uh, obviously, with my, my headset that I had, it was very much tucked away from my mouth. So, like, little things like blowing into the microphone and stuff like that didn't really make all that much difference. One thing that I am quite cl glad of, though, is that I don't really need that much of a pop filter. Thanks mainly to the way that I speak. I don't really say my P's properly. When, instead of making a P noise, I'll do a, more of a P. A much more aspirated. Anyway, you will see here that we are coming in, uh, making sure that my, my entry orbit is coming along and being nicely aligned with the orbit that I'm trying to aim for to put this satellite up here. Obviously, this uh, pre-alignment technique is something that I picked up on our last mission to the moon where we had to also put stuff into a specific orbit and stuff like that. So it's very nice to know how to get those things all lined up. Right, anyway, Kerbin High Temperature Science, this def high temperature high altitude science is definitely something that we need to be getting on with here because this is in essence an entire science mission it's nice to have the the contracts there but our real goal here is to open up as much the uh, r d building as possible so that we have lots of nice bits to play with when we start making orbital hotels staging points and way stations for the booming tourist industry that we're going to start up which is obviously my my long-term goal for the series here is to really like power game the the tourism try and get everything in place um for smooth and efficient tourism this of course means things like an ssto to bring the tourists up from curb to low curb in orbit then we need some sort of um i don't want to use the shuttle again but a shuttle pod to go from low, low curb in orbit to the various other orbital stations around say the Mun or Minmus or even elsewhere but I'm pretty sure the interplanetary missions will be different uh, and then we have yet another vessel to take them from the orbiting stations around their parent body to the landing zone or whatever and then back again I should imagine I'm gonna have like holiday camps down, down on the, the surfaces of these bodies that that would be quite nice but anyway, what we're going to do now is go around and do just some lining ups of nodes. You know, we want our periapsis to ma match our periapsis. We want to make sure that our uh, descending nodes are all good. And for some reason, I completely staged at the wrong time. Uh, I, I knew that I wasn't lined up. I'd very, very loosely got myself close there. Uh, and this means that we're going to have to make a reload because this thing has no way of controlling its own flight. And it is so far out of whack with where it needs to be that it's just not funny. Of course, one thing that you might very well find funny is the fact that my last quick save was in orbit around Kerbin, so we have to go through all of that palaver of making sure that our orbit is light, uh, correctly aligned when we enter the Minmun system again. So, yeah, we're going to just uh, glaze all over that and get back to being inside Minmus's sphere of influence. So now that we're back out this way, my plan is a relatively simple one, but of course all the great plans in history have been simple ones. We're going to go around to all the major points around this orbit, apoapsis, periapsis and the two descending and ascending nodes, and just take as much time as possible making sure that all the opposite points are as spot on as possible. Obviously this would be a lot easier if I had some uh, RCS on, on board. Unfortunately I do not, it is almost all entirely down to pure rocket work as we have not opened up the R&D lab uh, as much as we could at this point and indeed that is why we are here so here is prime example of why we are doing what we are doing and why we are doing the science we are doing. We literally have one final adjustment to make to our orbit and this is of course the inclination. Uh, thankfully we are provided with uh, descending and ascending nodes on our target orbit here so I can just see how close it is we need to get and with the smallest application of rocket fuel we indeed get ourselves down to like the most accurate representation of that target orbit as I could possibly get. We then make the release of the probe and by looking in the contracts we know we have done it. Yeah! And that roaring success only really leaves us with one thing left to do. That is, of course, play with this stack separator. I always love getting these random little bits of uh, debris that come off here. Uh, I think this is why I prefer the separator towards the... Uh, I don't even know what the other ones are called. The, the the ones that kind of separate but hold on to it. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, look, it's a little ring for us to play with in, in Zero G. Isn't that great? Anyway, back on with the mission. So with our space junk safely deployed, it's time to get ourselves onto the dark side of the planet so that we can start working on our orbit on the light side of the planet so we can get a, l a landing going down well. So over to Periapsis, obviously on the dark side. We're going to push down towards Retrograde so that we can bring our... Apoapsis, which very quickly becomes our periapsis, down to, I don't know, somewhere like three or four kilometers. I like to always skim down nice and low over the surface of Minmus because you don't really have like the big mountains like you have on the moon to worry about. 
And I've got to say, this uh, warp to here feature really is like unbelievably useful. When I first saw it, I was like, ah, oh, it'll just be like any other alarm clock system. But no, that being able to point at a point on your orbit, like just a little bit before your periapsis or whatever, is like unbelievably useful as I've said. But anyway, now that we've got to that point, what I've got what I've gone and done is all our low altitude science over Minmus. Uh, I, I just picked a point where like, well as you can see, we are 17 kilometers off the surface. That really is quite close. And of course we have our gen same general, let's just like ping around off the ladders to, uh, to be able to get back in there. Uh, what the thing I found to, that really does help if you find yourself in that situation is just give it a little bit of a nudge and eventually it will orientate itself in the same direction that you are orientated and you can grab hold of it relatively simply then. So once Valentina has successfully remounted the vessel, it's time to start thinking about where we're going to land. And I think on top of one of these mountains is probably going to be a good idea. Uh, my original plan was onto one of the great flats, but you know, everyone's done that. That's quite quite a done thing so I think on top of the mountain will a save us a load of delta v as we don't get like too far down uh, on the altitude and b just be a nice easy uh, easy place to spot uh, so kicking in a little bit of a spin here just to like you know simulate gravity because you know why, why wouldn't I be doing that and then we start slowing that slowing ourselves down so I'm trying to like pretty much kill our horizontal velocity here as we do appear to be over the uh, ideal landing point and indeed traveling at something like 24 meters per second really isn't going to move us all that much further along. Now if you thought I'd built up some sort of prejudice against the landings on Kerbin, oh you have no idea how I feel about these landings in a low gra gravity environment. Like, Valentina looks like she's enjoying herself, but believe me, I am not. We are just drifting down here at mere meters per second. I mean, our horizontal velocity is close on to, like, 15 meters per second, so the... Uh, orbital velocity of 30 meters per second means we're only really dropping at about 10 meters per second and ah oh, that that is slow when you've got kilometers to go that is really slow but at least now we are dropping vertically and that is kind of one of the main points of making a good landing or at least here it is anyway uh, I, the slope that I, would, I appear to be landing towards is a little bit steeper than I was hoping for I was kind of aiming for the crest and in fact we've gone for the uh, the wayward side instead but as we are starting to make our final approach I think a slope like this is well within our realms of capabilities uh, indeed we are now close enough to be able to reach out and touch the floor and that is what we need to do we need to reach out touch the floor with our landing gear uh, I do note that the lights don't really turn on until you get what well, at least don't start reflecting back for you until you get really really close so as we wait for the wobbles in our craft to settle down, we're going to celebrate Valentina, first Kerbal on Minmus, yeah! So it's time to get ourselves out and do the on-surface on science that we need to do. Uh, one of those things is, of course, plant a flag. Uh, I know that is not quite science, but it feels scientific to me. And after securing ourselves an EVA, we go and plant that actual flag, and we're going to call it not... No, no, we're not. We're going to call it Minmus A, not the flattest landing zone, because it wasn't the flattest landing zone. And I'm, to be honest, I'm really quite surprised that our vessel hasn't turned over there. I then partake into what I consider to be a bit of a standard procedure when we're on Minmus. I'm going biome hopping, or at least I'm headed off towards one of the smaller flat areas, as this is what I believe to be well within my range of EVA. Uh, at least it would have been if I'd got over this hill and spotted the flats. Unfortunately, it's actually all the way to the right there. So I kind of took a little detour and eventually sat down on the flats with uh, a little bit under half my fuel remaining. This, of course, immediately got alarm bells ringing. Uh, you'll see here when I'm just about to put my feet down, 1.8, something like that. Thankfully, because I'd taken such a bow leg journey out, I thought, no, this will probably be good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump up and I'm going to thrust towards it and use actually half the fuel that I have left. Well, actually, it was a little bit less than half. Uh, I had 1.8 and when I stopped thrusting, I was about 1.11. Uh, this was mainly so that when I got to the other end, I could do some maneuvering around to hopefully try and bring myself down for uh, a perfectly flat landing. Uh, obviously, it always seems to take just a little bit more fuel to be precise than it does just to jump up and thrust. Uh, so coming up to the ridge line here, I thought this was probably a good idea to stop because we're going to start using fuel to try and keep ourselves up above ground level. And whilst right now it seems like this is going to be a good idea, I didn't really want to go like flying past at 20 meters per second and then have to wait for her to stop. Uh, so we're going to walk it. 
Well, I've saved a little bit of fuel, ta uh, fuel in my EVA pack so we can get up into the capsule. Uh, then we're just going to have to wait because this took a while. So, so much time that I actually put some a weight on my keyboard, walked off, made myself a cup of tea, did other British things. And then came back to it when I got close enough. Now, when I came here, I really was under the impression that it was just going to be a simple case of like fly away in front of the, the ladder. And, and grab hold of it. Unfortunately, for some reason, it wasn't going to be that simple. And after two attempts, I had run out of what little fuel reserves I had left in my uh, jetpack there. So that made things incredibly difficult. And I was back to the scenario where I was just trying to jump for a hatch that was a little bit too high up. I mean, I, I found myself in this position before. I ended up having to make a bridge out of solar panels using the EVA, uh, using the Kerbal Attachment System. It was an absolute mess, took hours of my life and like gave me very little payback indeed. And I find myself in a very similar position right here. Uh, just jumping at it, hoping against hope that I just happened to land on the ring there. Uh, and there we go, that was the very last of my fuel pack gone. Uh, I was saving that just to make sure that I was pointing in the right direction and it failed. Not only did I fail to actually plant myself onto that ring, I have now got myself into a situation that is unstoppable. Uh, so I had found this on the moon. There is something about the female Kerbal model that makes her very, very susceptible to occasionally catching on the ground and pinging herself off with more inertia than she got in that than she had before she got into that situation. So we now find ourselves bouncing higher and higher as we build up more and more speed, and we are now already 200 meters away from where we started. I'm trying to time warp, see if we can do anything about that, just to try and speed this along because this is quite a quite a long process. Even though we are getting some amazing stunts. Like, once again, Valentina showing why she is the Kerbal Gymnastics Champion. Indeed, Valentina sees this as part of her training for this year's Kerbal Olympics. Uh, even though that the council have actually written to her and saying, Valentina, could you possibly not enter this year? We feel that your out, uh, outshining talent is really like putting the other girls off from joining. Or the boys, indeed. This is not a sexist game, of course. And we would really like to uh, encourage more people to come in. And she's like, no, I am the best and I need to prove that I'm the best. Mainly because she's been hanging around with Jeb too much and she feels she needs to prove herself because he just keeps on putting himself forward and making everything much more difficult for everyone around them. And yeah, she just needs to fight back and just be like, no, look at me. I am the one. Look at my back flipping skills. So... It's around here, about a kilometre out, I've realised that we're probably not going to be able to stop at any point. The The floor seems to be getting a little bit steeper, and with all these model glitches that keep happening, all I can see is more and more speed adding on. And so my options are quick load or walk back. Went with a quick load. Unfortunately, this meant that none of the landed science, or the flag, or the flight out to the F Great Flats got saved because unfortunately my quick save was just after we landed so we had to go around and redo all that this time taking extra care to not slip fall off our stuff or anything silly like that uh we go and get the flag out after of course the eva and call it exactly the same just this time with caps lock enabled because you know we were flying around so we had caps lock enabled and despite Valentina's protest that she really did want to go and explore this uh, little green rock, I was like, no, 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 we're, we're actually going to be done now. We're going to try and get back with everything we've got on us. So let's figure out which way we want to go. Uh, taking the unusual step to burn westwards, because this time that was the quickest way to point myself in a retrograde motion relative to the planet we're on. So, you know, that, that that's just a quick way of doing it. Uh, and waiting till I was at the perfect point to be able to start pushing myself out. And I thought this was possibly going to be... Uh, maybe sort of 20 or 30 degrees off of uh, parallel towards retrograde because obviously we had to do just a little bit more pushing and if I use my, my maneuver nodes correctly we can even stop uh, like wasting fuel on the whole inclination process and just keep ourselves pointing in the right direction. Our return voyage was the best type of voyage for having in space, but unfortunately not so good for recording. It was a dull one, but you'll notice that I've got everything on my ship here just to see how it reacts going through the atmosphere. Obviously, it had quite a large drag profile on the way out, so I'm expecting it to have a large drag profile on the way in. What I'm more interested in is how does the, that heating work? Like, is it just going to spread out? That was the solar panels. I was expecting the solar panels to go, but unexpectedly only one of the solar panels went so that that was all right we have a little bit of fuel left in the tank so we can do an assisted landing 
leaving us with the oh so interesting job of just floating through the atmosphere well i say floating plummeting through the atmosphere but unfortunately plummeting sounds just a little bit too uh too high energy too too interesting to know what's actually going on we are just riding on the updraft of the uh the the, the air pressure below us so i am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys i will see you next time where we're actually going to work on some things for tourism we're going to get that space station up around uh in low urban orbit so that we can start moving tourists out that way for minimal of uh fuel cost so i'll see you then when we're going to do that How about a small easter egg for all those of you that are uh, watching to the end, dedicated viewers, love you all. So you can see we've got the skipper parts there and we also got all the tiny parts for the uh, the probes and stuff like that. We managed to get all the robotics parts and having a look through, I got a few like RCS parts and stuff like that. We came out, we upgraded our R&D building, that was almost entirely so we could get the Clampatron parts. But of course we went through and got a few other things as well. Um, mainly things for fuel tanks the orange tank in particular uh, and I would like to say guys if you are the ones that are watching all the way to the end you are obviously my most dedicated viewers and I've got to say thank you very much for you guys watching you are the reason that I do this uh, it's absolutely amazing uh, bye